Hello to everybody out there in this great big world. This is your brother Dana coming to you from the city of Chicago. And to all of the true descendants, the seed of Jacob, um, the Most High Yah's precious chosen children, to you on this day I say Shabbat Shalom. Um, for years now, and I'm talking about years, I've always asked this question to my white evangelical family members, and here I am asking it again, which means I never get a straight answer. But my question is this, why is it that you care or are even concerned what our black family members think about you when it comes to you being racist, or when it comes to your dislike for our black family members here, why is it that you go to all of these lengths to hide or, well, you think you're hiding it, but try to hide or to try to think that you fool those of us, especially my black family members, that know you are racist. And I say racist because you really don't understand what the term racist means. But, but at least I'll throw the word racist is out right now to maybe uh, uh, supplement the word dislike, strongly dislike our people of color. Why are you so concerned? that your true heart and dislike for them will be seen by them, <laughs> you know? I, I, I can't get an answer from you. Because see, the sad part about this is the only individual that's being fooled is you. Those of us who are outside <laughs> of your mindset can see through you. You know, I, I, I was on Facebook, and so, you know, here this evangelical white woman, uh, probably in her upper 50s, um, was speaking back to a Hebrew brother and said these words. Are you not free to leave this land if you feel you are captive in it? And yet this was a woman that was appalled that I would think that she was racist or that she saw color. <laughs> and that is why I ask you over and over again to you, my white evangelical family members, why do you go to such great lengths to try and hide the reality and the truth that lies in your heart? Why do you care about what my, what my black family members think about you? Because you don't care what they think about you and, and your white supremacy. Um... You know, you make it very clear what you think about them. But is it because you actually are like the Pharisees? I think that's why, because Matthew, um, let me get it here. Matthew chapter 23, 27, and this was really off the cuff. But it says, uh, Jesus said to you, the teachers of the law, and I know you're not teachers of the law, but in your white supremacy, you absolutely take that authority because that is why the white churches that used to support some of the work that I did here in the inner city would always ask me this question. The black church that you're attending out there in Chicago, do they really teach the, the, the gospel and Christianity? Why? Because again, you've been fooled to think that the God, the Creator, the Most High Yah, gave this truth to our forefathers. When the lie in the of it is, is the truth originated in our Hebrew family members, which are today our black brothers and sisters here in America. 
But here you are, and Jesus is saying, Woe to you, teachers of the law, you Pharisees, you white evangelicals, you hypocrites. You are like wash, whitewashed tombs, which look beautiful on the outside, but on the inside you are full of bones of the dead and everything unclean. See, let me, let me just let you know, my white evangelical family members, what you look like when you try or you think or you go to great measure to hide <laughs> your racist or your strong dislike for our black brothers and sisters. You ever see somebody who was drunk and he or she, in the way they walked or in the way they talked or in the way they tried to get into their car, did everything possible to make everybody think that, oh, I'm, I, no, no, I'm fine. I didn't, I didn't have enough. Oh, no, I only had a couple of drinks. And as they're sitting there, they're, they're drooling from their mouth or, or they're, they're wobbling back and forth or they're dropping things or they're tripping or they're falling. See, you're like the drunk that's trying to walk the straight line in front of the cop and think you're doing it perfectly, but half the time you're on the ground. Why do you go to such great extent to hide what's really inside you when it concerns our black brothers and sisters in this country? Well, you can always leave white supremacy as if you own this land no you stole this land but now God even though it's in the commandments do not steal it's okay because see the reality of where I have come to fully believe is that any individual that is an individual or a person of color in their skin deeper pigmentation than mine are people that are not valued by my white evangelical family members because in the religion of Christianity, they are all inferior to whites. Just want to read what my brother so eloquently did in response to this white evangelical woman, probably, like I said, in her upper 50s. Uh-oh, now we got a person with that. I stole it, but now it's mine mentality. A person that's has had hundreds of years of an embedded racist mentality that knows nothing about God, but think they know something about everything just because the color of their skin. In my words, white. They can't stay in their lane because their self-pride, much like the original sin of Satan, won't allow them to stay in their lane. I wonder why, since they are so offended by Colin Kaepernick and people of color, why they can't go back to their caucus mountains. And dear Will, I don't even know if this woman understands when you say, you know, to my Caucasian family members, caucus Caucasian, that they need to go back uh, to the Caucasus Mountains because they're like, what? What are you talking about Caucasus Mountains? My ancestors come from Norway. My ancestors come from Germany. See, that's why I'm saying my people can really stand up and blow lots of wind. But their bark is nothing <laughs> because their bite. No, let me say that. Their bark is much louder, but their bite is nothing. You think somehow everybody but you should leave because of your ability to kill, steal, and destroy. If you have grievances, hey, that's okay. Like your grievance right now against the Democrats in this stolen election, this fraudulent. See, they keep saying 
fraudulent now because again, the votes that caused white superiority's king to lose were votes that came from whom? People of color. So you have a grievance, that's okay. But if any one a person of color has a grievance, they should leave. Such pride, such arrogance, just like the original carrier of those traits, Satan, which also was seen in the Pharisees, which also is seen in my white evangelical family members. So to you, my white evangelical family member that would be willing to respond back to me and share with me why you, or, you know, I know white people do not like to be stereotyped with other white people. However, white evangelicalism stereotypes one person of one color or one religion to everybody. But see, again, we won't go into that because then I'd have to start talking to you about white fragility. That's another video. But if one of you white evangelical family members out there that might be listening to this would be willing to help me understand why you go to such great measures to try to hide your drunkenness or your racism from those you don't care about anyway, I would really like to have that understanding. Because right now, after 27 years, none of you have been willing to answer the question. 